So today we're going to be creating this line shot in After Effects. These can be really time consuming to create, especially if you have to create a lot of them. So I'm going to show you some techniques throughout the video to really speed up your workflow and a few tricks you can do to make everything just go a little bit quicker. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and draw our axes for the chart. Right, so I'm going to use my pen tool here and I'm going to set my fill to something like white for now. Just so we can see it pretty easily and I'm going to go ahead and draw my line. I think that's good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring this down just a little bit. Uh, next, we're going to do our text. So I have a trick for doing this that's going to make it a lot faster. Uh, we're going to create our first text layer. And once again, I'm going to set this to white just so we can see it. And the font I'm using is Balto. I'm going to set this to book instead of bold uh, just for this. So I've got my first text in the position I want it. I'm going to come to the layers here and come under the source text and hold alt to write an expression. And I'm just going to set this to index. And what your index is, is the position of the layer. So if you look at what has this hashtag right here, this is the index. So you see this is index one. And when we set the source text to index, it's just setting it to whatever this number is. So if we duplicate this and we bring it under, we can see this text layer is now in position two. So if we move this over just a little bit, we can see it reflects the position two. And that's just going to save us a lot of time from having to type each number in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all my layers. Okay, so I've got all my layers spread out here uh, with my text. I'm going to take the number 10 and I'm going to bring this all the way to the end. And I'm going to take my number 1 and I'm going to put it in the position that I want it. So I'm just going to bring mine over just a little bit. Next, I'm going to select all of these at once and come over here to my align. And I'm just going to set distribute horizontally and that's going to distribute them all for us now i'm going to repeat the same process for the y-axis but before i do that i'm going to select all of these and send them to their own pre-composition i'm going to call this x axis okay so on my y-axis i'm not going to go all the way up to 10 i'm just going to go to 8. so once again i'm going to select the 8 and put it at the end and then i'm going to select all of my layers and I'm going to do distribute vertically this time. And that's going to line everything up for us. So this time it looks like not everything's aligned to the left. So I'm just going to select them all once more. Make sure my align layers is set to selection. And I'm just going to align them all to the left. Then I'll take all of these once more. And I'll pre-comp them again. And I'll call these Y. So next thing I'm going to do is rename this to axis lines. Then I'm going to take all three of these and pre-comp them. Next, we're going to start drawing our line. So I'm going to use the pen tool for this and I'm going to set mine to a really bright red and I'm just going to start drawing my line. So I'm going to start at the three and depending on how your data is, you could do this whichever way you want. I'm going to do a general increasing line and I want it to be getting bigger and bigger all the way up to the very last one and then we're going to have a big draw. And I think that's pretty good. You could play with the uh, stroke size and, and get it just how you want it. But I think this is a pretty good size for mine. I'm also going to go ahead and turn off the transparency back here. I'm going to come into this uh, axis and I'm going to change the color on all of my text to be black. Okay, so I changed everything to be black and now I'm going to go ahead and bring in my paper texture. Okay, so I've got my paper texture in and I'm just going to go ahead and scale it down because it's a little big. And I'm going to bring this to the very bottom. So a good way to get these muted colors that Vox does a lot is you can actually change the transparency and it's going to make everything just look a little bit more muted without having to actually set these specific colors from a palette. And I'm just going to go ahead and make this bright red color a little bit more than the black. So I think that's looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and add our title. You can really give this title anything you want. And I'm going to set my font over here to be bold. I'm just going to reposition that a little bit as well. So the next thing we want to do is kind of add a divide line in where we have some kind of event that happened that made this line go down. So to do that, I'm just going to select my pen tool and I'm going to come right through the center here of where we want it to be. I'm going to set this to an orange color. I'm going to come into the settings here and just turn on the dashes to this. So I think it's looking pretty good. And once again, I'm going to come to the transparency here and just turn it down. And I'm going to rename this divider. Okay, so next I'm going to put the text here where we have some kind of a big event happening. So I'm going to call it big event. I'm going to go ahead and take the pin tool and just draw a quick line between this. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so it covers the entire text and set this to more of a yellow color. I just saw it acts as a highlight. I'm going to rename this highlight so everything's organized. So next we can go ahead and animate this highlight. I'm just going to add a trim paths to it. Set the end at 100 and then start it at 0. And I'm just going to give this easy ease and I like to come in here and in this speed graph editor just do this kind of shape. I'm also going to set the transparency on this to fade in as this stroke comes through. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to take both of these and bring them out. Next thing I'm going to do is animate this divider much in the same way. I'm going to use a trim paths and I'm going to set the end at 0 and we'll have it coming in so that it's at 100. 
and I'm going to give this an easy ease. So now if we watch it back, we can see this comes in. I think it's a little slow, so I'm just going to bring this a little bit closer together. I'm going to bring this down as well. Next, we're going to go ahead and animate this red line. So I'm just going to move this over a little bit. Looks like I messed up with my pin tool and it didn't actually connect with the axis. And I'm going to bring this under so the axis is over it. I'm also going to be naming this just to be a little bit more organized. So come in here and add a trim paths once again. And I'm going to set the end to zero. I'm going to come over here and I'm not going to go all the way because we want our event to happen and then we go all the way. So I'm going to come to about this point and I'm going to wait some time. And once this is done, then we're going to go all the way down with it. And I'm going to take these first two and I'm going to have it start fast and end slow and then here I'll have it start slow and end fast. So that's a lot of our animation. I did notice one thing is this here. Right, so I'm just going to play around with this and get the right number. So for me, I think that's pretty good. So the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is actually zoom in on this and get that stylistic approach that Vox does. So first thing I'm going to do is take all of this and send it to its own pre-comp. I'm going to center this text just a little bit more uh, just because I don't like the position that it's in right now. I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to pre-comp all of this and just call this chart full. Okay. And now on this chart full, I'm going to come in here and we want to start zoomed into it. So I'm going to set a position in scale keyframe and I'm going to bring it to this position probably at almost two seconds. And I'm going to come in right here. So as this chart starts, we're very zoomed into it. I'm going to give this easy ease. I'm going to come in here to this chart and I'm going to highlight both of these and just mess with this speed just a little bit. And once we have this going down, I'm going to also bring the graph down. So it looks like it starts right here and then it ends here. So I'm going to copy the motion of that where it starts slow and ends fast. I'm just going to time these up a little bit better. So I think that's looking pretty good. I just noticed that my line is not completely uh, where it should be. So I'm just going to bring this over a little bit. So that's cutting through the center there. So to really give it that stop motion effect, I'm going to add a new adjustment layer and I'm going to add the posterized time effect. And I'm going to set this to 12. So I let it render out here and now if I play it back, you'll notice the posterized time effect is just making everything look a little bit more like it's stop motion. The final thing I'm going to do to this is I'm going to add a vignette. And you don't want to overdo it with this. You just want to do a uh, very light on this. All right, so you can see if we overdo it, we're getting a lot. And you might like this effect, so you could do that if you want. But Vox, they have a very, very slight vignette. I think something even less than this would be good. So something about 13 is looking good to me. So that's the animation. I hope you learned something from this. Uh, if you want to check out my other videos, uh, you could click here.